I'd like to see the funeral bill, please. All the expenses. And would you like to tell me why your brother paid eleven seventy four of this bill? Yes, ma'am. The day we made funeral arrangements, which was September the fifth, he kept calling me ten times before I could make it from Antelope down to Oakland. Just, just, just tell there. And then once we got there, he said, listen, mom had a some kind of policy. I'm still not sure what kind of policy because I didn't deal with any of her affairs. So I only have to go on what he told me. He said, she has a policy for $4,200. And so I said, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll put that $4,200 forward and then the remaining balance we shall split. And he says, okay, I'll make sure we should receive it in seven days. Seven days came and went. Two months went by. I asked him about it through text. He just started throwing a whole bunch of garbage at me. Okay, so Mr. Ware, did you have this conversation with your sister? The only conversation I stated to her is that I thought she was entitled to half of the funeral services. Okay, that you would each pay half. I thought it was fair. That's what I, said. I believe that that's fair. So you agreed to pay half. Correct. Funeral costs were approximately $6,000. That would mean that you would each pay $3,000. Correct? Correct. You gave her $1,100. Correct. So? Next thing I know, I'm being served to come to court. So you acknowledge that you owe her money? I acknowledge I owe half of the funeral services, Your Honor. Correct. Which I agreed on. Or $1,836, because there was no insurance policy. Is that reasonable? Ma'am, I'm going by the verbal agreement. He wanted to write me a promissory note. Listen to me, there was no policy. Turned out that there was no policy. Okay, I found that out afterwards, months well, afterwards. So, yes. So, so, I mean, don't you feel as if you're in responsible for half your mother's funeral expenses? Had he had told me that in the beginning, I would have prepared myself and done just that. But that's not what the verbal agreement was, ma'am. The verbal agreement was that he would pay half after the burial policy. Kicked in, yes. But there was no burial policy. Then why did he tell me that? I don't know why. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Maybe he thought there was, and when he investigated, he found out that his mother had surrendered the policy for cash. Your Honor, he surrendered those policies. You know, prove it to me. I have some texts no, here from him. No, prove it to me that he surrendered the policies and got the policy and got the cash, which was $1,500. Show me. Okay, well, that should have went towards the funeral arrangements. 1836, judgment for the plaintiff. We're done. Thank you, Your Honor. Parties are excused. You may step out. I'm very disappointed. All we have is our word. And if you give somebody your word, you need to stand by it. I've tried to be there for my mother, my sister's children. You know, I'll love him until my dying days. I just don't agree with him right now. But yet, this is what happened. So, I mean, it is what it is. It's not about money at all. It's just about the principle. Money changes people. I'm moving on. I wish him the best of luck. That money does change people. I don't want to have any contact from either one of them.